Hey, Mr. Kokesh, my name's Warren, and I'm a senior in high school. I'm a big fan of your activism. I've read Freedom, and it is a masterpiece, to say the least. Oh, well, well thank you. It has dramatically changed the way I look at libertarian ideology. I'm ignorant as far as how I can put this knowledge in action. Could you recommend some tips on how to go about lowering or eliminating my tax burden in the future? I want to truly thank you for the liberating messages from Freedom and ABTM with gratitude and freedom, Warren Gamble. Well, Warren, I'm, I'm touched. I'm honored. Thank you so much. And the book Freedom is designed to be a global red pill to apply equally everywhere across the world. So I'm, I deliberately kept out anything about how to lower your tax burden or how to live more free in the United States or anything like that in the interest of uh, that universality. So I'm glad you asked this question. And it was one of the follow-up books I was considering writing, you know, like Freedom in Action or, or something more about the lifestyle that you would lead as a, as a result of this understanding. So how to lower or eliminate your tax burden. So the first thing is that you have to keep your reportable income at the point where you don't incur any kind of tax responsibility. And so I, that's what I've done. Um, I have no income on paper other than my money from the VA. Yes, I get uh, 70% monthly disability for PTSD, which, I mean, aside from all the legitimate reasons I have for that, for having dealt with PTSD, um, we decided when going through that process not to file for hearing loss or joint damage or, or back pain or uh, any of the other physical injuries, but uh, it's still just, just barely enough to get my taxes back. So that's, that's what my personal finances mostly look like, is that I have a disability income and I spend it. And so the rest of my business I'm able to do through my corporate entities. And this is sort of like, you know, what, what, what all the big corporations do in different ways. You know, how do we make sure that our taxes are as low as possible? And in major corporations, there are some ways that they can't get around or outside of that. And that's fine because they, they, they want it that way. But for an individual who's saying, ethically, I do not want to support the coercion of the state, it's a little bit different. Now, if you have a corporate job, there are certainly some limitations to this. You can't just say, uh, you know, quit your job or go to your boss and say, you know, don't take any withholdings from my paycheck. Although you can do that actually. And you do, if you are in that situation and you want to keep that corporate job, should explore all of those options with a professional about how to minimize your tax liability. And it is possible to opt out of withholdings from your employer if you uh, file the right paperwork and say, I'm gonna pay my taxes on my own, please stop paying the government for me or helping them steal from me, Mr. Employer. Now, or Mrs. More importantly, is the ways that, that they won't tell you to change the situation for that. So for example, if you, instead of taking an employment position with a company, you take a contractor position with the company, you can do it as an LLC. So you create Adam Kokesh, LLC. And now every time I drive to work, that's a business expense. So the thing is now the company doesn't pay me personally, it pays my LLC. Now my LLC can then spend money on things that are business related and deduct them from profits, deduct them from whatever without incurring any tax liability. So essentially you could kind of make yourself uh, a zero income or a zero profit LLC that doesn't profit in and of itself in a legal way that encourage in, in, that, uh, that, that incurs a tax liability by saying that you know all the money that it makes is spent on this, that, or the other. Now, of course, depending on your personal financial situation, this might not be possible, right? But you can certainly buy a car as an LLC. You could have the LLC rent a room in your house as your office for your LLC, uh, and therefore your LLC has to pay you personally for that, and then that could be paid in some way that is not a tax liability because it goes to pay your mortgage or your rent or whatever the case. And so now your business is paying that. And so your business can pay for other things as well. Um, you know, like I said, your car, your gas, anything that you can convince the government is, uh, is a business expense can then go in that. And now you, you're starting to see some of the, the opportunities here. This is also what I do in, in some part with my 501c3 LLC, excuse me, 501c3 nonprofit. Now, on a, on a nonprofit or a 501c3, there are more restrictions on what you can spend that money on. I can't just take 501c3 money and uh, buy drugs, for example. Um, although my LLC is an educational, I'm sorry, my, my nonprofit is an educational nonprofit that produces 
educational materials. So anything that's related as an expense to producing educational materials is a legal legitimate business cost. And this is something that even a lot of statists would tell you just to minimize your taxes. Like, hey, I just I bought this video camera recently. You know, I could have paid for it out of my own money and I would have had to pay taxes on that as personal income before taking it as money. But if I don't take it as income and I spend it as the nonprofit or as an LLC, now it's in that business expense category. So that's one big way to do it. So again, now before you take on any particular action here, I'm not a professional in taxes. I'm not a professional in tax law. And so you should consult with someone who's an appropriate expert in those areas uh, before committing to anything uh, of that particular course of action that may incur some, incur some other tax or legal liability. And the other category here uh, for doing business is to use Bitcoin, uh, cryptocurrency, uh, whatever it is that is not counted in dollars that the government can't tax, can't see, or what, what have you. Now, here's uh, where I'm actually going to advocate that you break the law. Are you guys ready for this? I know, shocking, right, on Adam versus the man, that if, uh, according to IRS rules, according to their website, you can look this up, any exchange, even in barter, that is over $20 in value is supposed to be recorded and reported on your taxes. Now, it's one of the silliest, most unenforceable tax laws there is, right? So, yes, you are breaking the law or, I don't know, falsely reporting your taxes, whatever, if you engage in a barter exchange and don't report it. That being said, the vast majority, I don't know, 99 plus percent of barter exchanges done in America are not reported to the IRS. So you're on pretty safe ground there. And uh, a lot of the business that I do is in cryptocurrency and barter exchanges. I don't have employment contracts such as work trade agreements where people trade me the product of their labor or their time for cryptocurrency. So it's, it's a silly but very important legal distinction because uh, I'm, not, I'm not creating an employment legal scenario where I have a corporation with a regular paycheck. I have an individual barter agreement between me and someone who is doing work that I want them to do. So that's, uh, I guess that's, that's the, those are the principles that I, that I apply to my approach, Warren, and uh, I hope those are helpful for you.